So tonight is a, is, is a really cool night. I, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, Pastor Michael uh, just challenged me to, to to dig deep back into the Book of Acts, which I'm going to which I'm going to do um, some more. But this is a really amazing book, the Book of Acts. The the really interesting thing is, is and um, just for those of you who know, um, here I'm going to have a squirrel moment. Uh, for those of you who know, I just got confirmation from Amazon. I've got 35 Bibles coming in large print. Okay, they're all Recovery Life Bibles. So I hope that anybody who uh, wants to get a Bible from us, you can get it. It's large print. It's Recovery Life. Uh, Recovery Life Bible is basically the NLT Bible. Um, it's a really good version. It's a broken down version, which um, I think really helps speak to, to all of us. And there's some side captions on the Recovery Life Bible that... That I think I hope that you guys all read because it explains what's going on in that time and, and a good and a, and a good illustration. Um, so when we get them, if you want them, I'll, uh, we'll have them in the bin for you guys. Um, so I, I, you know, I'll leave even leave a few out here. And guess what? If I leave a few out and you grab them, you're not stealing. You're gonna have them, okay? <laughs> so, but if you want to feel like you're stealing it because it makes you feel better, go for it. Knock yourself out. <laughs> but. The book of Acts, if you truly read the whole book of Acts, and then you come to Street Life Ministries, and you, and you partake in this ministry, you see how this ministry operates, <laughs> what you'll end up seeing is that you will actually see the book of Acts actually playing out here, Monday and Wednesday, and in Miller Park on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's actually really unique on how this ministry and the book of Acts really play itself out quite close together. So, Peter and John are going into the into the temple, right? They see a man that's uh, a paralytic man who's there. He's, he's basically panhandling, right? And, uh, uh, John and, and John and Peter say, no, we don't have any silver, we don't have any gold, but what we do have is that we want to bless you and want to heal you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now stand up and walk. And what happens? He stands up and walks. Right? Just like that. Now, they go into the temple. And basically when they enter the temple, those who are what I would consider haters hear about what they're doing on the day that they're doing it. And what do they do? Anybody? He sees them. Right? Put them under a house arrest. So they're in the temple. You can't go anywhere. You can't leave the temple. Now, uh, think about this. Two weeks prior to them being in the temple, <clears throat> there was 220 people in the upper room who came to Christ. When they came down from that upper room, 5,000 men came to Christ that day. 5,000 men. That's what the Bible says. Because they didn't count women. <coughs> The strength behind that is, is could you imagine all the women that must have came to Christ that same day? Now, two weeks later, only two weeks later, 5,000 more men come to Christ in the temple. Women not counted, so if you count the women, I can only imagine if it must have been 20, 30,000 people within two weeks came to Christ. That's powerful. That's the mighty name of Jesus. Right? So upper room, Pentecost, temple. All proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. And that mighty name goes out in over, over 10,000, 20,000. Who knows? One day when we go to heaven, we'll, we'll get to know how many people came to Christ that day. That, isn't that powerful? Isn't that, isn't that powerful? You know, it's really interesting. I just want to side note. So I had lunch today with a really dear friend of mine who, who I just really adore. And he was a part of this ministry for many years. And he put his hand up at God for a long time. And, uh, and today we shared, we sh we shared a, 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 a love that we both, both enjoy, that's sushi. I don't know if anybody likes sushi, but I, I happen to really just be addicted to sushi. But we sat down and we had sushi together today. And I sat and I listened to this man. And we shared some laughter, and we cried, and we just enjoyed each other's company. And he's about ready to graduate from a program in March. And he's so on fire for Jesus. And it's amazing how 
almost 12 months ago, that's not that's not the road he was going to go down. Yeah. And since he's been in this program, Christ has physically touched this man in ways that I would have never ex expected. But that's just the power of Jesus. He's healed, he's healed this man. Completely healed him. To the point now where his choices that he's making for when he leaves this program are what I would consider just tremendous. Because the, the choices he's making to go back into the work world may be more ministry minded than than actual physical secular work serving the Lord which is amazing so I want to read here Acts chapter 3 verse 17 through 27 now remember house arrest right they've committed what crime have they committed what crime have they've committed it's going to be, it's, it's, it's the same thing that a lot of us now are starting to get persecuted over now by mentioning the name of Jesus. Okay? It's, I don't know if you guys know that or not, but it's, it's, it's getting harder and harder for those of us who truly talk about Jesus and proclaim Him as our Lord. Okay? There's a whole other road I could go down, but it's, let me just tell you, it's, it, it, it's going to get a lot worse, but um, don't ever lose sight of your Lord Jesus Christ. It says here, And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God retold by, uh, foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that the Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent there, therefore and turn back that your sins may be bottled, uh, uh, blotted out. Right? By in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins can be blotted out, right? Gone, right? That times of the refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that that He may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time of restoring all the things back to which God spoke <coughs> by the mouth of His holy God will rise up, for you, a prophet like me, from, from your brothers, you shall listen to him in whatever he tells you, and it shall be that every soul who does not listen to, to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. Now, that's pretty, that's pretty, woof, right? Well, let's, let's remember now, let's remember now, okay? So let's not get, let's not get, let's not get, um, Confused, okay. I, I want I want to stop there for a moment because I think I think that right there is something that that's that's worth with worth sharing about really quick because some people may listen to and I'm not gonna see any names because I, I don't believe in bashing other pastors, okay? I don't believe in that. But some people will preach the word of prosperity. Some pastors will preach the word of God that there is no penalty. That God is just like a flower child handing out grace and forgiveness to whoever and just don't worry about your sins. That's not what they're talking about. They're talking about there is forgiveness and grace. There is love of Jesus. There is a way to blot out your sins. There is a way for, for God to have forgiveness of your, of your transgressions. If you ask for that, if you ask Jesus for forgiveness, if you turn your life and your will over to Him, but if you don't, if you don't, if you keep living your life in self-will and you're running your life raggedly wrong, there's going to be another chapter, we're in three, there's another chapter, which is five, which you're going to hear something that's super serious about what God does if we lie to God, right? Because he's a God, he's a father, remember, he's a dad, right? He's a father, he loves you, but he will discipline you. He forgives you, but he's going to hold you accountable. Okay? Where did I leave off? You, you are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God have, God have raised up his servant, 
sent him to you first to bless you by churning every one of you from your wickedness. Who? Let me see here. What does it say? Does it say? I mean, it says everyone. Is that, that, did I read that right? Everyone. It doesn't say just me or just Michael or just Sean. It says everyone. It says to bless you by churning everyone of you from your wickedness. Now, it's not my it's not my responsibility or my job to sit here and point out your wickedness. That's not my job. That would be that would be me sitting here judging you. Right? That's for God to we all here know the difference between right or wrong. Amen? Right? We know if we're living in wickedness or not. We also know if we're choosing that lifestyle because, well, frankly, it's just easier. Right? For me, and I don't know about anybody else here, but for me, boy, living in sin, living my life for self-will is, is a lot easier. It's a lot easier, right? But to live for God, right? To live in a relationship where I honor my marriage, where I honor my friends, where I honor my church, where I try to live in integrity and, 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 and have a good set of morals and then live that out wherever I go. Man, that is hard work. <laughs> is it easy? Have you found it to be easy, sweetheart? It's hard. I will tell you, there's 66 books in this Bible. There's 66 books. 40 authors and 66 books. And I have not read anything in this Bible yet. And maybe Pastor Michael or, or Sweetheart, maybe you can point somewhere out in here where it says, becoming a Christian, life gets easy. Or, or, or um, once, I for, once I'm forgiven of my sins, I'll never sin again. Or, or that all of a sudden, because Christ is perfect, now that I accepted him, I become perfect. Because I haven't found that in this. What I have found out is that if I live my life for Christ, my life is blessed. My life is way better today than it ever was when I was running around doing dope. Right? And lying and cheating and stealing, having warrants out for my arrests, and, 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 and having restraining orders from almost every single family member that I, I, I have. Um, you know, uh, it, 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 it's a beautiful life today. Yeah, I know, huh? It's funny. But it's, it's the truth. You know, it's, it's amazing. I have 12 years of sobriety, almost 13, and I still have one family member, one, that's just still waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah. yeah it, it is hard to have that. And she's the one, she's the one that's the closest to my wife and I. And, stuff, and it's really hard. It's really hard because, you know, she smiles at me, but at the same time, you walk into her house, I always just see her like, where's he going? Like, no, 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 don't go upstairs. Like, like I'm not going to rob you. You know, I feel like it's funny, like I should just take something in my pocket and go, oh, hey, I forgot about this. But, uh, but life, life, life is a blessing today. You get to a point in your life where, where, you know, serving the Lord is awesome. You know, there's things that happen in my life today that, to be honest with you, would never ever happen when I was in my addiction. I, w I wouldn't be married to my beautiful wife today if I was in my addiction. I, God wouldn't give me the opportunity to stand here and preach the Word of God to all of you, right? Man, that would be a real hypocrite if I was up here preaching the Word of God and I was getting loaded, right? Um, and just the friends that I have today. Just the people who I have in my life today that have been able to help mold me and shape me into being a better person and not wanting anything from me but wanting to help support me and make me into a better person. Right? You know, God's love, God's healing, and God's forgiveness that He has for all of us is powerful. It's absolutely amazing. And you know what? 
I'm also not stupid enough or naive enough or so far into my recovery, into my Christian life enough to sit here and think that there isn't some of you who are sitting here right now just wishing I would shut up so you can have dinner or not believing that the word is true or believing that, you know what, whatever you believe that I'm saying is not real or I'm not, or I'm not, that I don't believe this or whatever. I don't know what's going on in someone's head, but listen, this ministry has been around for 17 years, okay? And let me give you a little insight in 17 years. I've been a part of this ministry going on 11 years this year. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And the things that I have seen within this ministry, the lives that I've seen transform and change in the 11 years I've been here, right, have been absolutely blowing my mind to see how things have changed. And even now, right now, currently, some of the people that are sitting here right now that I've actually seen and witnessed the growth in their life. And it has nothing to do but only by, by Jesus Christ. So I know that God exists. <coughs> I know that He's there. I know that He's, <coughs> he's with us all if we tap into that. You know, it's funny because I think to myself, you know, 12, 12 years ago, 12 years ago, when I when I first got clean and sober, I would have never thought I'd been here, right? Ever. Oh, it's 11. Wow. I forgot they went a little bit longer. We'll get, we'll get to some food. We'll get to some food. One second. You know, but let me just tell you something. And, and, and this, and this, I don't know if this, how this is going to affect you when I say this, but I just want you to know where my heart is and why I do this because I love, I love you all. Okay, I love this ministry. In the, in the 11 years that I've been doing this ministry, let's, let's, let's go down a, a really quick road of what rumors and gossip may do, okay? In the 11 years that I've been in this ministry, before I met my wife, the first rumor that went out was that I was gay, right? That I had a relationship with another man, and I got married, right? The second rumor went out that, um, what was the second rumor? Oh, well, the second rumor was when my wife and I were in Minnesota, when I was in, we were in Minnesota, Somebody sweared that they saw me shooting up heroin in a campsite over there behind IHOP. Okay, first off, I don't shoot heroin. I'm a speed freak. It would be meth. The other is I was in Minnesota. Right? Then the other rumor was, the other rumor was that while I was at the police station talking to the Redwood City Police Department on how we can better go at making the campsites, like, not get destroyed, a police officer walks in, hey, I just heard that you were in jail. I go, what am I in jail for? Because you beat up your wife. And I go, really? And he goes, yeah, and he goes, and I just talked to her. That was Billy, right? And then the other rumor is, which I just heard uh, three days ago or four days ago, that I just embezzled a couple hundred thousand dollars from the ministry, and I bought a Land Rover, <laughs> and at the ministry, my board told me to give the money back and to return the Land Rover and now they're working on how they're going to fire me. But yet I'm still here preaching the word. I love you guys. Okay? I love you so much. Listen. Listen. You know what? It's amazing to me what, what gets said. Okay? But I love every single one of you. It's been an amazing 11 years. And I hope God, and I don't know what God's going to do in, in our lives. I don't know what, you know, because he's an amazing God. But I hope I'm here for 11 more years. And 11 more years.